Okay, so we're just going to, well, as quickly as we can, go through the uh, shelf tutorial. Um, and hopefully that will uh, help you through any problems. Okay, so from your resources tab, um, you, know, you might have to click on um, the here button that appears at the top in Teams. You might have to then click on open web page or go to website or whatever it says. Uh, but hopefully you, 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 you're confident getting here by now. And then we're on unit 10. Uh, we're on assignment 3. And it's the on shirt desk type. Okay. So let's open that up and have a look. So getting started. So first thing to do is to log into OnShape and go to the Learning Center. So let's do that now. Okay, well that's loading up. Select self-paced courses. Scroll down and select simultaneous sheet metal. So we'll do that right now. Okay, self-paced courses. <coughs> Simultaneous sheet metal. Let's have a look for that. There is simultaneous sheet metal. And you see, I've already completed this one, but we'll go through it again now. Okay, so we've got simultaneous sheet metal. Now it says you can work through the whole tutorial, but you get, you get a little certificate you can print out. But the part needed for the assessment is near the end. So you know you can go go through it all from start to finish. Um, but what we actually want is this this bit here: exercise multi-part sheet metal. Um, and uh, there we are, so I'll highlight that there. Okay, um, go follow that part of the tutorial and come back when you have something that looks like that. I'll be waiting. Right, okay, so let's move this over to this window then. Um, we're going to go to uh, multi part um, thing. Okay, open up the public document exercise sheet metal shelf. Now, um, what happens here is that it opens in cad.onshape. So what I might do um, is I'll put a copy of this document up in um, in your documents for you um, in um, in Onshape, so you can uh, you can just work with this on uh, in TMC uh, .onshape. But you know we can carry on. So we need to make a copy. Okay. Um, okay. Let's Let's do that. Okay. So if you've started this in, in CAD and you've done it in CAD, then just give me a shout and uh, I'll talk you through transferring it over to TMC. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So let's move this then over to here. And that goes to there. There we go. Right. Okay. So. So if you started this in, in CAD on shape like we're doing here, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, um, then just let me know and we'll we can transfer it to TMC. Okay, right. So we've done the first step. Okay. Um, select the start sheet metal model command and choose the convert option. So there's our start sheet metal uh, convert. Okay, and we've got a little picture here. Uh, we choose those three faces. That's that face, that face, oh, faces to exclude. There, there, and there. There. Okay, so instantly we're we're uh, we're, we're in a box. Okay, right. Okay, let's move on to the next. <coughs> Um, select these edges to bend, edges or cylinders to bend. So that's there, there, and there. Okay. Um, what else do we need? Uh, thickness 0.25 inches, bend radius 0.375, K factor 0.45. Doesn't mention the roll K factor, so we'll leave that as is. Minimal gap 0.025. Corner leaf round scaled. Let's just scroll down a bit there. Uh, bend depth scale one and bend relief scale 1.0625. 1.0625. Fantastic. 
So we've checked all that against the information and we've pressed the big tick button. Okay, next. Rename the sheet metal model one feature in the feature list and the part one. Right, okay. So, um, so we can rename this as case. And we can rename this as case. It's generally a good idea to to rename things as you go along. You can rename extrudes and sketches. Um, so it all, all helps um, to to do that when you um, when you know, especially for, for larger models, so that it makes going back and editing them much easier. Right, what's next? Okay, we've renamed. Right, this one seems to catch a lot of people out. Yeah, uh, can't see the can't see the. It says you know, draw a sketch on the plane, and people are, well, I can't see the plane. Well, the planes are right there, aren't they? So we can sketch, and it says on the top plane. So we can we can select top plane. Yeah, or we can click on the eyeball to see all the planes, or we can press the P button on the keyboard to toggle the planes on and off. So I'm just going to click, click select top plane uh, from the side there. Okay, so I've selected the top plane like it says, uh, and it says create coincident constraints to the insides edges. So that's normal to to, uh, to think. So all we're doing is we're just drawing a quick rectangle. And then we're saying coincident, and we're making, we're locking these edges like this, and that's all we're doing. So that the shelf fits in the case. He says, "Come on, there we go." Okay, and then you can see if you click the tip button there, you can see we've got a shelf in the right place. You can see that there. Okay, so that's the next one. Okay, create a new sheet metal part. Okay, so let's do that um, feature. There we go, uh, sheet metal. So um, no, it's not not the case. We don't want to convert the case. Um, we want to thicken, or do we want to extrude? Choose the thicken option. It says. So let's do that. Thicken. Uh, we want to thicken that. Yes, yes, we do. Um, Come on, there we go. Thank you. Uh, and then um, again, thickness 0.25, uh, bend radius 0.375, K factor 0.45, minimal gap 0.25 inches, round scaled, um, corner relief 1.25, oh, um, brown scaled, that's not mentioned, so we'll leave that as is. Uh, depth of relief 1 and 1.625, so let's say tick. Okay, so we've got a nice little shelf there. But obviously, you know, if this was reality, the shelf would just fall to the bottom of the case, wouldn't it? So let's see what we, what we do next. Okay, rename the sheet metal model, um, so we'll rename the shelf. Okay, well, let's do that. Rename shelf, and again, rename shelf. Very quick there. All right, right. So now we put these in. Okay. So perhaps the easiest way to do this is a sketch. Um, do that there. Normal to sketch plane. Um, and it's probably easiest if we just um, hide the case. Yeah. So let's dive in with a rectangle. Okay. So um, our rectangle. It says the um, is is. Four, and it says that the height there is the thickness of the material, so that's 0.25, um, and uh, we want a dimension from there to there, which is four. Right, okay, so what's, what's well, it's off to one side, isn't it? So how can we uh, make sure it's on the right side? Um, well, we can, uh, we can do a sketch. There we go. Can you, oh, let's just move in. Right, so we could probably select the, the midpoint there, but the easiest thing to do is just to put in a. Um, well, there's my midpoint. There's my midpoint. You see, it, see it change there. Just to put in a construction line. Just put in a center line. It just makes our lives a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, so now we can put in a symmetric constraint. We can say that, that, and that. Yeah. So now that's fixed. Now that's all blue. We've we've got it. We've got it as we need to. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do another rectangle here. Now this is the same size as the rectangle we've just drawn, so let's use the equals constraint. Yeah. Um, 
on your there we go uh, so then all we need to do then is the dimension from there to there at five okay right and then finally so we, we've done those um, yeah what else did it tell us um, yep rectangles are equal in length so they suggest that we use the equal constraints add the shown dimensions yeah read the full instructions okay uh, next it says uh, we can mirror this so let's use the mirror command so because we've put our center line in uh, we can just select the mirror select a mirror line it says so there's our mirror line select entities to be mirrored boom and there we are on the other side now the advantage of that is we've we we are using the the, the advantages of the, of the cad package if in six months time you know somebody says actually we need that tab to be you know we we, we, we we've changed material supplier uh, everything is now 0.3 of an inch thick because you know, we're using inches here um then change that and it changes everything i only need to change in one place yeah you know um you know, that's now that's got to be six because it's not strong enough before you see everything changes so we only need to change in one place and that's that's one of the really useful things about parametric uh, parametric design and, and you know, on shape really. um, okay so so that's that so we've done that so let's tick that okay so that's all that we need to do there right next subtraction scope so we've created these things and what we're going to do is we're going to put now yeah, Bit like you know origami or something you know we're, we're, we're making a, a slot um you know uh, a slot for a, a tab to go in into um but at the moment uh, we've not got we've not got any metal there yeah so it's a select the tab feature so let's do that there's the tab feature okay um and select the sketch creator so we can just yeah it, it, we can't it's tricky to to yeah you can get that one you yeah, get that one you might not be able to get that one because it's hidden so you know the <coughs> Excuse me, just a second. Okay, so the oopsie daisy, we've gone back a few steps there. So the easiest thing to do is just select it from from the side there, and you can see we've we've selected those those areas. Okay, right. So what do we do now? It says um, so we've done that subtraction. So subtraction scope. So what means we want to take out? Uh, we want to take out material from these three uh, from these three sides so we hit the tick button and you can see that's exactly what we've done so there's a little gap so we've got a bit, a bit of tolerance there and we're taking it out from those three sides okay so we've taken out the material from the from the case um, and the tabs on the shelf just just fit in there right next Right, um, let's create a tab, create a sketch on the top face of the shelf as shown. Um, use front edge of the shelf, center point. Right, okay. Um, so let's do that then. So sketch, top face of the shelf, uh, normal sketch plane. Um, so it suggests using a center point arc. Um, people seem to struggle to get it going right. So it's probably just as quick uh, to do something like uh, a circle and then just trim off the bit that you don't want. Um, so it's radius 1.25. So that's going to be a diameter of 2.5. Okay. Um, and then I uh, just need a... Use the use command like it suggests, and we'll bring that line in. And then, just for neatness' sake, let's trim out the bits that we don't want. There we go, and we're left with uh, the half a circle there. All right. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Right. Okay. So let's tick that. All right. Um, Okay, next, uh, select the tab feature and choose the sketch that we've just created. So I'll we'll select the tab feature, select the sketch we've just created. Uh, there we go. And we can also click this shelf here and it, it, it copies that, that down. 
So we've created two tabs there. So that's exciting. Um, there are flanges to merge. Um, let's just check that, that there. Yeah. Um, tab profile, flange to merge. Okay. Excellent. Uh, there. Yeah. So face of sketch four. Um, I'll sketch four and then uh, flanges to merge. Okay, excellent. Um, of course, you could have selected sketch four from here when, when you did that as well. That would have that would have worked just as nicely. Okay, and what's the next thing? It's open up the sheet metal table and flat view pane, view flat pan. So uh, there we are, flat view. And this this is just sort of showing off what what on shape can do. Um, you know, uh, in terms of so that's the the sheet of metal we'd need to cut to fold up to to get to to, to get this this part. Yeah, so. Um, and there's, there's the shelf as well, so we can we can we can see that. Uh, and any changes we make while we're looking at this view will be reflected in the three-dimensional view as well. Okay, um, so let's just uh, close that again. Okay. Um, right, center point of the arc, or in our case, the circle. Um, so we need a circle. Um, oh, we can do a hole. Okay, um, let's do that hole. Um, Simple sketch points to place hole, so we might just need to view that. There we go. All right. So there's our, our center point. Um, ANSI clearance one three. So American National Standards Institute um, clearance size clearance size one. What do we want? Ah, there we go. One inch. There we go. One three. Um, zero point nine zero four. Um, fit. Okay, we've got that vertex of sketch for manage scope shelf, and we can also merge scope here as well. So that means it will should. He says merge scope. Case. Is it not going to do that for us? Ah, through. There we go. Okay. Excellent. So that puts a hole through through both parts. Now let's just um, un eyeball that so we manage to get. Fantastic. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, right. So chamfer, so if we just um, take the case off for a moment, just clicked on the eyeball next to the, next to the case, uh, it's going to chamfer uh, half an inch distance, 0.5, okay, equal distance, one, it's just these corners here, two, three, four, tick, Right, okay, we've done the chamfers. Um, and it edges to fill it. So a few rounds. Okay, so let's bring our case back there. Right, um, half inch radius as well. Okay, fill it. Uh, again, 0.5. Uh, and we're going to do there. And there. Yeah, so we've got a nice nice round on those two things uh, and we're also going to do a nice round there and a nice round there and then these four points here one two three four okay and there we are that's all looking nice and smooth um, 18, okay, yeah, assign a material, review, okay, so we've finished there, but we, we can assign a material, okay, um, I'll, I'll let you do that in your own time, um, just right click down here and assign a material, the yeah, mile steel is the way to go. Right, so now that we've done all that, uh, let's go back to our original tutorial which is just here right 
welcome back. That wasn't that fun. No. Unfortunately, this spec says we need to do more. We need to add stuff to the model we've created here um, to meet the specification. Yeah, um, minimum of four folds, two bends, four slots. Components should be assembled into a model that contains a minimum of six components that are oriented correctly, containing a minimum of three fabricated components. So we've got two fabricated components here, so we need a third um, sheet metal model, uh, and then we need three other components. Um, so that's what the rest of this tutorial is. Okay, so here we go. Uh, first, we're going to put a hem around, so we're going to use that button just there. Right, so hem. Okay, um, and it says uh, we're going to choose all of these. We're going to there, yeah, outside edge. I'm just clicking the outside edge all the way around. Um, all the way around, outside edge, like so. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Outside edge. Thank you. Uh, so we've done that, right? Okay, now you'll notice that it's going into the part, so we'll just press the arrow there so that it goes outside. Okay, uh, total length 0.5 inch, 0.5 inch, and everything else. Okay, the photo should go out if it doesn't change direction with the arrow. Yeah, okay, good, right? Yeah, right, good. So now we've got a nice rolled edge so we can't. Uh, can't cut our fingers on it, more difficult to cut our fingers on it anyway. Uh, we need another shelf, okay? We need another shelf. So we're gonna offset the top plane upwards by three inches. So there's our plane button, uh, entities offset, top plane, so I'm just gonna pick that there. Um, I said previously I can, you know, we can toggle on and off the planes there just by pressing the P button. Um, or individually just by clicking the eyeball next to it. So I've selected the top plane, we're going to offset that up by three inches. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got a new plane. So I'm just going to make that visible for the moment. Okay, so there we go. And now we're going to do exactly what we did for the for the shelf, for the blue shelf. Okay, um, but we're just going to uh, it's only going to be a rectangle that's 9.5 deep. We're going to do exactly the same. So um, it's exactly the same same steps as um, as we just did. So you notice I picked the plane there from the list on the on the left. Uh, okay, right. So we've got the plane. We need to draw a rectangle, rectangle, and then we're going to constrain it just like we did before to there and to there and to there. And this time we're going to give it a dimension from there to there, no, from there, thank you, to there, of 9.5 inches. Okay. So, and then the steps we follow are exactly the same as we've just done uh, in the tutorial. So we'll go to um, Sheet Metal Model, we'll go to Thicken, we'll pick that, and we'll leave the defaults as is. Um, we'll do that. We'll come here. We'll rename it Shelf 2. Um, and we'll rename that here as well. Um, shelf 2. Okay, so, uh, and then once more, we'll go, uh, let's, so let's remove the case. Um, and we're going to do another sketch. So, okay. <coughs> Oh, I'll see if I can edit that out. I do apologise. You don't need me sneezing in your ears. Oh, back in a second. Right, okay. I've quite lost track. Yes, we're doing... So we're doing, just going to do these tabs. We're doing it exactly the same way. So normal sketch plane. Now, we've already drawn the tabs here. Um, so what we could do is we could use the use command uh, and we can zoom in a little bit, can't we? Uh, and we can just bring in um, those edges like that. And what we've got to be very careful to do there is also make sure that we close uh, close the rectangle. Okay. Um, you know, students before have followed, uh, you know, so I've just, uh, there we are. So that, that's where we're up. So, so I've suggested use the use command. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So we've got we've got a closed um, a closed shape there. So we're just going to repeat that process uh, in these places. Um, 
Oops, Lizzie, don't want more. Zoom in, there we go. One, two, and there we go. Right, and again, make sure we close that shape with a line. Because uh, on a shape, can only generally uh, do stuff if we've got a closed, um, if we've got a closed shape. So, uh, one more time. Let's just zoom in there and there and there. Okay, and uh, this will have the effect that if so, then if we change the dimensions on that very first sketch, uh, it will also change the dimensions on this new sketch as well. Um, okay, so there we go. We've we've done that. Um, oh, I've missed a line. Okay, so let's just double click on our sketch. Um, normal to sketch plane. Uh, let's just bring bring that in. There we go. Right, so you can see we've got. We've come, we've complete, we've we've closed the uh, closed the shapes because they're, they're they're shaded, okay. And so we've got those there, right? So now we can bring the case back in, and again we do exactly what we did last time. Use the tab button, tab profile. So let's just select the sketch from the uh, list on the left, uh, as we did last time. Subtract, so, bleh, easy for me to say. Subtraction scope. Just click those inside faces once more, okay. Um, and there we go. Uh, job done. Uh, and you can see that's exactly uh, what I asked you to do. Um, yeah, see the same section on the Learning Center tutorial for clarification. Yeah, so you're just doing exactly the same thing. Okay, and uh, one more time, let's just uh, chamfer those edges for consistency. Yeah, so that's there, and there. There. Okay. And right. So that's our second shelf finished. Okay. So we've got two shelves. So we've now got three fabricated parts. But you'll remember that uh, the spec uh, says we need six parts in total. So, you know, this isn't my finest design. Uh, we could probably do something a little better, but it does meet the spec. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a lid for our desk tidy, okay? So we're gonna use that as our face and then we're gonna draw a line down. Now this, uh, students often struggle here, uh, seems to cause a little more aggro than, than it might. Okay, um, so use the use tool again to select the top edge all the way along. Make sure your joints, jo join the ends of your lines up using the constant constraint, yeah? Um, Either I must have been having a good day when I put this in the tutorial, or I, I just forgot to include details. It's not quite as straightforward as that might suggest. So what we're going to do is, using the use command, uh, just going to bring in that line at the top there. Uh, we're going to bring in that line there, and we're going to bring in this line here. Okay. Right. So we've done that. Uh, I'm also going to bring in that corner point just there. Right. Okay, so let's uh, let's remove that. Let's zoom in a little bit now. Okay, so I'm just going to touch that, and can you see it makes that vertical line? Okay, um, I'm going to move that up, and you can see there. So that's now coincident. So we can move that. Yeah. So that's now linked. Okay. Uh, down at the bottom here. I'm just going to hide the case because I found that that makes life on that shelf a little bit easier. Yeah, so again, just a touch there. And that makes that coincident. Now this, you see that this is black and not blue. So I can't actually move it. But if we hover over it, you'll see we've got the constraints. So if I click on that and just delete that, that constraint there, you'll see the end has turned blue. And so we can move it up. Okay. And I just need to bring the case back in for this one because we've got one more thing to bring in. Uh, so we should just bring in that end point there. Uh, and again, if we look at the end there, we've got a constraint. So I'm just going to delete that constraint there and then move that down. Oops, Daisy, move that down. Yeah, you see we've got a constraint. So now our line, if we just hide the case, 
uh, goes all the way along with no gaps. All right. Okay, so let's just bring everything back into play. Right. Okay. So that was our sketch. Next. Next. Um, Lidtastic 2. Make a new sheet metal model and use the sketch you've just made. Extrude it as shown. I appear to be missing that. Right, okay, so um, extrude. Let's do that then. Uh, sheet metal model tab. Okay, uh, and it's an extrude. Uh, I'm going to use sketch 7 that we just created. Okay, and you can see I'm coming out uh, blind. And you can also see that yeah, this is a lid that's going to sit on top, so we don't want it coming into the model, we want it going out of the model like that. Yeah. Okay, uh, and we want it to go the other way. Okay, um, um, I've said the depth is 12.55 inches. Now that's not correct. Um, again, I'm not entirely sure what I was uh, what I was doing when I did that, that 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 thing, but as you can see, it falls short. Okay, so I'm just going to tick that for a, a second. All right, so we don't actually want it 12.55, uh, and this bit isn't in the tutorial. Um, so we need to we need it to come to this this end here. So if we just zoom in and select that face, you'll see at the bottom here it tells us the area of the face. It gives us information about the thing we've just selected. All right. If we go over and select the opposite face, can you see it tells us the parallel of the dis distance, 13.05. Okay. So if we just double click on our sheet model again uh, and we change that to 13.05 then what we'll find is that goes a little bit longer uh, and goes to the right place. Okay, so just a, a brief correction there. Right, next we've got, uh, we need to make a cut on the front face of the lid, because obviously we've now got two things in the same place at the same time, and, and you know, reality says that we can't do that, otherwise things get messy. Um, so sketch on the front face here, here, normal to play uh, that's 4.6 by 3.5 so let's just draw a rectangle um, yeah let's constrain it to the bottom there is that constrained yes and then we'll put in our dimensions yes we drive the shape of the dimensions as ever uh, come on there we are 4.6 okay uh, Five. Okay, so that looks like that. Now we need to make sure it's central, so it's probably easiest just to put in a construction line at the midpoint. You see it change there? We'll just put in a construction point and then we can use the um, make sure merge scope box has the lid selected, so we use material from the lid. So let's just check that as well. Um, so we're just going to uh, make that symmetric uh, there, there, and there. Oh, that was the case, might be. Hmm, what's going on here? Yeah, I thought I'd uh, locked that to the. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. Right. No. Ah, uh, right. Okay. It's to the centre of the uh, the rectangle. So let's just move the rectangle out of the way for a second, and then we can uh, hopefully. There we go, that's what we want, isn't it? There, there, that's black, so it's constrained. Fantastic. Right, let's move that back over here, and then we can do the symmetric thing, and then that will be constrained. Previously, I was picking the center point of the uh, of the line I'd drawn. Right, so that's that's in the right place. Uh, it says make sure the merge scope box has the lid selected. So, so uh, okay, right, we're jumping ahead of ourselves here, aren't we? Um, so we're doing an extrude solid remove. Okay, extrude solid remove. Sketch eight. So I'm just picking that from the uh, list to the side there. Uh, now merge scope starts to make a bit more sense because we've got a multi-part model. Yeah, what do we want it to cut through? So all the, th the only thing that we want this to cut through is um, is that and um, you know we just want to, just want it to go go through to the other side, but just of this. Yeah, if we, um, Okay, all right, so let's tick that. So there we go, there's our cut. Uh, let's rename um, 
rename part four um, as lid. Okay, and uh, let's rename this as lid as well. Yeah. All helps just to keep track, especially when you're coming back to edit things. Okay, right. Okay, lid tastic number four. Fill it the corners. So let's get some nice rounded corners on there. Fill it. Um, yeah, one, two, three, four. So let's move into there. See, that's not looking so good, is it? We've still, still got a uh, two things in the same place at the same time. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Mm. There we go. Okay, so we've filleted our corners. 0.5 inch. Carry on, we'll see if it sorts itself. I, I saw it out later. I can't, can't remember, it's been a while. Right. So, create a new sketch on the face of the first shelf. So, let's do that. So, in that case, we're just going to hide the lid. Okay. Hide the lid, sketch face, normal sketch plane, um, and dimensions are shown. So, two and a half, 0.5. 0.4 away and central. Okay, so let's start then with the construction line um, that goes to the center of this circle. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so there's our construction line. Um, now it helps, and then we can just draw a very quick rectangle there. Okay, oh, I should have just tapped through there, shouldn't I? Uh, 2.5, oopsie daisy, 2.5, go, and half an inch there yeah. right okay uh, and that's 0 0.4 away from ah okay so let's bring the, uh, the lid back in yeah because what we want then is a dimension from there to there that says that that is 0 0.4. Okay, so we're in the right place now. Okay, right. So extrude, remove, a sketch up through the lid. Okay, right. Let's do that. Um, extrude, remove, sketch number nine. Merge scope, lid. Uh, just not intersect. Change direction. <coughs> okay. There we go. Okay. Right. Um, use the finish metal model button and select each part. You'll have to do this four times once for each part. So that just closes out the the sheet metal model for for each each part that we're doing. Okay. Um, I'm not happy about that. Why is that doing that? And more to the point, how can I correct it? Hmm. Right, so all we do is we come down here, yeah, finish sheet metal model, sheet metal part. So it's the case, isn't it? Case. No. Okay. Case. No, right, we can only do one at a time. Okay. Case. Um, finish lid, finish shelf, and finish shelf number two. Okay, right. So we've finished doing our sheet metal modeling. Now what? Next, we need to move some material from the underside of the main body. Now, this, this doesn't usually go too well. Um, people often miss this bit out okay so we're going to do a quick sketch on this face normal to sketch plane uh, circle 0.15 okay there we are center of the 
previous circle, 0.15, oh, sorry, 1.5, 1.5, there we go. Right. Uh, so there's our, there's our sketch, okay, right. Right, okay, I've, I've missed that bit completely, haven't I? Right, yes, so there should be an extra thing here. Um, now, using your last sketch, the one what you use to remove 0.1 inch from the bottom of the case. Right, so I've not actually stated that, have I? So, we're going to just make a cut that's 0.1 inch, so extrude, remove, um, 0.1, um, there we are, that's what we're taking off. Okay. Right, so we've just taken a little cut out of there. Okay. So now we're going to do um, a pin that sits in that sits in there. So uh, continuing with my general philosophy of, of CAD, um, we create the full part and then we remove material from the part. Okay. So I'm going to extrude and I'm going to use that sketch that we just did. So that's sketch 10. Uh, I'm going to flip that up, and I'm going to take that up by 6.1 inches. Okay. Right. So that's the that's the size all the way through. But then we need to remove material because uh, the actual hole is is smaller, isn't it? Yeah. So so we need to remove the rest of the material that's that. Okay. Uh, so while we're here, I'm just going to rename this. Uh, I'm going to rename it pin, uh, or not? and that was this extrude, so I'm going to rename that pin as well. Okay. Right, so uh, there's our extrude. So then I'm going to, um, right, well, let's, let's find out. Right, on the top of the new part, sketch a circle and extrude removed down by six inches. Okay, so sketch, top of new part. Circle and normal to sketch plane. Um, one inch. Okay, and then just give it a bit of 3D ness. Extrude, remove. There we are, select that. Um, and we take that down by six inches. Okay, so now that fits perfectly through the holes. Okay, excellent. Another part, another sketch. Um, sketch on top of the big shelf is probably worth hiding the lid as you do it. So let's do that. Let's, let's hide the lid. Um, another sketch on top of the big shelf. Okay, normal sketch plane. Uh, let's have a look. Right, so... Um, Let's draw a circle from the center point there to that point there. Okay, um, we've done that. And then we want two lines coming. Um, let's just draw a couple of. Let's just draw a couple of a couple of lines, uh, and then we'll set the constraints up for that. Right, okay. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. And what we want is a tangent, mate, of that point there, tangent to that point there. Is it going to do that for us? It is. Right, okay. And then we want that point to be coincident to the circle. Okay, so let's just do that again. Tangent there, there. And then we want the end point to be locked onto the circle. Okay. Right, okay, finally, um, and we need, um, let's see, let's just make sure we're oriented correctly, move around. Right, okay, so we want these two points to be level with each other. There we go. And then we need a line between them, don't we? Okay, and you'll see that's the only thing that, we've, that we need to dimension. So from the center of the circle, to that point there is, come on, there we go, is 1.5. OK, 
Okay. And then we just want to trim that bit of the circle out. There we are. That's good. Um, I think. And we also want to bring in that circle there. So if we just have a look at our, if we just hide the original shelf and the pin for that are, there you are, that's what we're looking at. Okay. Right. Um, okay, so that's that's our diagram. That's our, that's our sketch. So let's bring that back in. Okay. Right, what's next? This is exciting, isn't it? Um, extrude up by one and a half inches. Okay. So we'll pick our sketch that we've just done. Uh, blind, new, new part, 1.5. There we go. Excellent. This is looking good. Right, okay. Um, right, now hide everything apart from the lock nut, obs, lols, uh, and draw the sketch on the right plane. Okay, so let's, let's make life easier. Uh, sketch. And we're going to choose the right plane, so I'm just going to pick that from the list on the left. Okay, so I've picked the right plane, normal to sketch plane. Oh, that's exciting. Right, let's just spin that around so we're in the correct orientation. Right, okay, so um, I might just need to bring in that bottom line there just for starters. And we've got somewhere to start from, so let's go up and then we come down and then we come along and that locks to right. Okay, so we need to bring that line in as well, um, just for reference. Has that done that? Yeah, okay, right. So then we go from there and block that and then down to the corner and then back again. Okay, um, so well, in fact we can probably let's undo that. If we just go to there, and then we can trim, can't we? Yeah. So we'll just trim that line back there. Trim that line back there. Okay. So we've got our. <coughs> I've got our complete thing, so now we just need to dimension it. Okay. Okay, 0 0.664. 0 0.981. Okay, right. And that should be black because it's constrained by those two endpoints. But anyway, um, it is what it is. But it's constrained there and there, so it's not going anywhere. It's got to be correct, hasn't it? Because all, all the other parts are, are correctly placed. So we'll tick that. Okay. Extrude, remove symmetric the sketch by two and a half inches. Right, okay. Extrude, remove, sketch 13. Symmetric, 2.5 inches. There we go. Look at that. That's nice, isn't it? That's good, isn't it? Right, so if we just bring everything else back in, what we should see is that that fits perfectly. What we see is that that's not fitting perfectly. Hmm. <coughs> Used to fit perfectly. What's going on? Okay, looks like we've got some troubleshooting to do. Put the hole in the shaft so it can go through. Okay, so yeah, we need we need to put a hole so that we need to put a hole in this bit in the locking nut so that the so the shaft can go through. So let's just. Um, 
do a sketch, top plane there, normal to sketch plane. Let's just bring that circle in. Okay. Right. And then extrude, remove, sketch. Yeah. Merge scope. Yeah, make sure you pick, pick, pick the right part for that. Part six, blind, and then just through all because we're just picking that one part. Okay, and now if we do that, you'll see we've got a hole all the way through. All right. Okay. So let's bring that back in. So we now have six parts, three of which are are um, solid models, and then last last thing it actually do is just put a chamfer uh, on both sides of your nut. Yeah, right. Okay. So let's just do that quickly. Um, this is 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.1. I think is better. What's in the tutorial? 0.1 and okay, and that should be your model finished. Um, now I've obviously got something wrong somewhere because that gap should go over that bracket, um, and also the edge of the shelf here should come over that edge there. So I'm going to go away and do some troubleshooting and when I've worked out what it is I'll add it to the end of the video um, but hopefully that gets you um, with more luck than me to a finished, uh, a finished product. Thank you very much. Okay no I tell a lie not quite finished yet. Um, we, I think this sorts the problem out. Um, fill it the edge as shown 0.2. So if we do that, fill it um, edge. Um, yeah, so that propagates it all the way along by 0.2 inches. Okay, so hopefully, um, if we we should see there. Mm, okay, still some troubleshooting to be done. Okay, found my mistake. Um, if we go back to case, and it does tell you this, I do remember reading it now in the uh, in the instructions, that you need to make sure that the thickness goes inwards. And can you see it just gets a little bit smaller there? Yeah, so that's my mistake. And now if we change that, and wait a second, we should see if we bring everything else back in. We've got a nice, a nice match there. Slight problem there. So again, a bit more troubleshooting needed. And going back here, you can see I've failed to do the symmetric constraint. So if we just do that now, um, there. Hopefully, yeah. So it's shift over just slightly there, uh, and then. With a bit of look, there we are. Everything lines up. Fantastic. There we go. So, a couple of uh, small errors there uh, now fixed, and you can see we have our finished model. Happy days. Thank you very much. Bye.